Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday to you. Welcome to our daily devotion and prayer time. We are continuing in the book of First Corinthians, Paul's letter to the church at Corinth, and we pick up today in chapter nine. Interesting chapter here as Paul talks about his relationship to the church at Corinth and to uh, other believers that he has impacted. <clears throat> Verse one, he says, am I not as free as anyone else? Am I not an apostle? Haven't I seen Jesus our Lord with my own eyes? Isn't it because of my work that you belong to the Lord? Even if others think I am not an apostle, I certainly am to you. You yourselves are proof that I am the Lord's apostle. <clears throat> this is my answer to those who question my authority. Don't we have the right to live in your homes and share your meals? Don't we have the right to bring a believing wife with us as the other apostles and the Lord's brothers do, and as Peter does? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have to work to support ourselves? What soldier has to pay his own expenses? What farmer plants a vineyard and doesn't have the right to eat some of its fruit? What shepherd cares for a flock of sheep and isn't allowed to drink some of the milk? Am I expressing merely a human opinion or does the law say the same thing? For the law of Moses says you must not muzzle an ox to keep it from eating as it treads out the grain. Was God thinking only about oxen when he said this? Wasn't he actually speaking to us? Yes, it was written for us so that the one who plows and the one who threshes the grain might both expect a share of the harvest. Since we have planted spiritual seed among you, aren't we entitled to a harvest of physical food and drink? If you support others who preach to you, shouldn't we have an even greater right to be supported? <clears throat> but we have never used this right. We would rather put up with anything than be an obstacle to the good news about Christ. Don't you realize that those who work in the temple get their meals from the offerings brought to the temple? And those who serve at the altar get a share of the sacrificial offerings. In the same way, the Lord ordered that those who preach the good news should be supported by those who benefit from it. Yet I have never used any of these rights. And I am not writing this to suggest that I want to start now. In fact, I would rather die than lose my right to boast about preaching without charge. Yet preaching the good news is not something I can boast about. I am compelled by God to do it. How terrible for me if I didn't preach the good news. <clears throat> so Paul is talking to this church at Corinth, which he started and um, has now moved on to start another church. And he's specifically talking about um, his right as the founder of that church of the uh his right as the uh founding pastor of that church to receive um support from that church for his ministry and there were many things going on in the church at corinth at at this time as we have read many many things that paul had to address and i think what he is addressing here is the idea that that they needed to realize what benefit he was to them and to support he and the other apostles, the other members of his team that were continuing to spread the gospel. Basically, he was, he was, um, he was telling them that they needed to support him as a missionary. And, and this is kind of where we get the idea for our, our support for missions is that God has called us to support the work of the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. But I want us to take a, a, a deeper look at this for just a minute and not just talk about paying those who are um, uh, pastors or ministry teams or missionaries. I want to talk to us about how we respond to those in our lives who have helped us, who have helped us on our spiritual journey. We need to be aware constantly of the people that God puts in our lives um, to help us on this journey of being a fully devoted follower of Christ. You know, we have the word of God 
to lean on. We have prayer to lean on. We have the Holy Spirit to lean on. But in addition to that, God has put in our lives people, friends and um, associates, people that uh, are there for the specific reason of lifting us up, of holding us accountable, of correcting us, of encouraging us. And we need to, to um, make sure that they know how much we appreciate that. I'm not talking about monetary gifts or, or anything like that specifically. I'm talking about just recognizing the importance of other believers in our lives. Paul was saying to the church at Corinth, hey, don't forget that we have been a vital part of your faith journey. Don't forget that. And he wasn't doing that just to get... Uh, accolades for himself, what he was trying to teach them was a very spiritual, um, deeply spiritual concept, and that is the concept of gratitude for those in our lives. So my challenge for us today is this. Take a few minutes today and think about those that God has placed in your life, those who have been there to support you spiritually and to help you on this journey that we are going through. Reach out to them. You don't have to give them a gift or anything like that. Just reach out to them and, and, and let them know that you appreciate them being in your life. They will benefit from it and you will benefit from it as well. Let's pray. Father, thank you for um, this lesson this morning. Thank you for the words of Paul and help us all to realize that you have placed people in our lives that will help us on this journey that we are on. Godly people, loving people, and help us, Father, to, to simply say thank you to them for being in our lives. Help us to examine those things today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I trust you will have a super Saturday as we prepare for worship tomorrow. Um, I do want to let you know we're starting off a brand new uh first of the year message series um, we're calling it count me in and we're going to be looking at the call of god on our lives and how we can answer that call as is our custom tomorrow because we're starting a new series we will be celebrating the lord's supper having communion together tomorrow during um, our 11 o'clock gathering so if you can join us please do so and uh we'll look forward to a great time of worship tomorrow until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. May you fall just a little bit deeper in love with Jesus today. Take care. God bless you.